This series is brought to you by Globe Plants. Welcome back to part five, where we are diving deep into lighting. So with Twin Motion, you basically have a series of different lighting available to you, predominantly external and internal lighting. In the last episode, we discussed all of the planting, landscaping, of course, thanks to Globe Plants for sponsoring the video. But today we are specifically talking about the actual lighting because we did briefly discuss the ambience and also the global lighting features in our last video, I will dive into interior lighting in this tutorial. So let's break it down and let's make it super simple. If we fly into any one of our rooms, let's start with the master bedroom because it is by far the easiest space to light. We can do lighting in a number of ways. First of all, we actually wanna make sure that our lighting appears on the ceiling. So we can do that by going into Sketchfab and searching potentially for something like a downlight. Once some options appear, you might be able to download something that looks like this. That's probably a little bit too detailed for lights. So as an alternative, what we can also do is go back into our library, go to our objects, go to our primitives, and then start with a base circle. If I simply click once, click OK, escape out of that, select our base circle and reduce the size by 0.1 and by 0.1 again, we're gonna get a very small downlight sized object. Now, it's up to you guys if you want to have it only as one object or if you wanna duplicate that once more. So if I was to duplicate this, drag it down a tiny bit, let's go copy spacing 0.1 is okay and then resize again by 0.9, you'll see that we've created two identical base circles. Now we can drop them both in to this ceiling and drop one lower than the other. For best practice, I like to move them off just a little bit, go to my metals and then drag and drop my brushed metal just onto the back layer. So then that way we can change that to a nice black aluminium base go back to materials, scroll down to the bottom to neons and drag neon to onto the smaller base circle we created. In that instance, we can realign our base circles together. Now we have one black base circle and one glowing light. If we wanted to continue reducing that in size until we were relatively happy with the downlight, we could and it makes something along those lines. What we would then wanna do is hold control shift or any way you want to select both of these objects in our scene right click and then we want to create a new sub container that sub container is going to be called down light simply drag and drop the base circle into the down light from there on in and that way you can toggle on and off your down light in one go in order to move those elements, we do need to select those base circles again. So let's select that base circle once. I'm gonna put two down lights directly in front of the bed. So let's fly back around to the underside of the bed and then duplicate by holding shift a secondary down light. Pressing okay, we're happy with that. Drag and dropping it back into down lights so we can group them and toggle them on and off as we need we can select all of our elements and realign once again as we see fit. So I'm genuinely happy with the position of those two down lights. It looks a little bit odd, but bear with me for the moment. We are gonna get a little bit more creative with this down light design. Next, we wanna come into our library. We then wanna go into our lights panel, which is what the predominant focus of this video is. Now inside Twin Motion, you have a series of different lighting styles. And all of these cast different shadows, cast different lights, and cast different glows. So it's up to you where and how you wish to use them and what they're being used for. To keep things relatively generic and simple, let's go with either just the generic spotlight or pick any one of these and keep it consistent for this downlight type. Personally, I think this IES7 looks relatively nice. So I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna click it over each one of my down lights that I've created. Next, I'm gonna make sure they are dragged into my down lights folder. Again, so I can make life simple for me to turn them on and off. And just flying around, you'll see that down light is relatively bright even in the daytime. Now, of course, if we click into one of our light sources, we get a new menu and we get an abundance of different settings to change. 
Now, of course, Twin Motion is overwhelming in this sense and there's a lot to learn. So don't feel overwhelmed, just simply go through this step by step. It is quite self-explanatory. First of all, light enabled or disabled. So ticking that box will either turn the light on or off. Next, you'll see the intensity at 300 lumens. Now, from the get-go, 300 lumens might seem like an excessive amount, but if you actually dive into Google and bring up any of these downlight lumen charts, a six to nine watt LED downlight, which is basically every single downlight you can buy roughly at anywhere from six all the way through to 12 watts, is 450 through to 800 lumens. At the moment, we've got our set to 300. So if we bump that up to 450, do the same for the secondary light, we can then move on and I'll explain how this works once we tone our lights down. Attenuation is basically a very fancy way of saying how far is the light being pushed from the downlight to the ground. In this instance, we have approximately three meter ceilings, so we can reduce that to three meters and you will see that the intensity of the light isn't being pushed through the floor. If we increase it to 10 meters, it's throwing that light much stronger for a much further distance. So 2.7 ceilings, three meter ceilings will give you a more realistic. You can see these four yellow lines shooting around the sides of the LED light. And that is talking about the code of angle, how far across it spreads the actual light. Generally, it's a little bit under 180 degrees, so 160 is perfect for a downlight. If you have a sphere that's illuminated, it'll be obviously 360 and doing a whole lot more. Whereas for these little lights, 160 is perfectly fine. If you need to change both of the lights at the same time, you can hold shift, select both of the lights and then adjust the settings simultaneously if you've created a copy. Moving further down, we have our temperature and our color. This one is a downright silly. Slide it down, the lights go red. Slide the slider up, the lights go white. And if you Google different light temperatures, you will find exactly what each Kelvins are. Generally, the LEDs come in 2,800 Kelvins, 4,100 and 6,000 Kelvins. It depends how you like your space to be lit and what the actual end result you're looking for. So warm, neutral and cool is a very simple way of looking at it. Or you can find some guides like this that will basically tell you how each space should be used. Generally, 3,500 is a really nice natural glow. It makes you feel warm and comfortable. I think 3,000 is too yellow for me, same as 2,7. So I like the 3.5 personally. Once you move into the four, five, and the six, you're really getting into the crisp, bright, hospital grade lights. And yes, they're fantastic, but they might get a little bit clinical. So three and a half up to four, you're running some beautiful lights. Coming back in, let's change this back down to three and a half thousand Kelvins to get a nice warm light. Down the list, you're going to have shadows as your next checkbox. Shadows is again, relatively simple. If I come around and tick my shadows box, you'll see that some additional shadows are being cast by this light. Now the purposes of having a shadow enabled and disabled is so that you can actually filter more light into your scene without having the additional shadows created. Anything from internal lighting will create a shadow. So make sure you have that ticked for best results. Whereas if you're trying to actually increase the brightness of this room artificially, you could go for something like an area light. So we could drag and drop an area light directly in front of that window. And once again, in front of this window. That way, when we come into our bedroom and render this image out later down the track, this entire room will be naturally flooded with light and we won't have to artificially enhance this image later down the track. Now, of course, these area lights do not cast shadows they're left off, whereas if you tick it, just a whole bunch of chaos happens that we don't need. So we wanna make sure that the area light is off. We wanna semi-match our external lighting to make sure we're bringing more natural lighting in for these sorts of artificial lights, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, depending on the actual environment you've set up. So if we went back into our ambience, went into details, we'd be able to see that our white balance is set to 6,500 which means we could select our two area lights, 
change it to six and a half thousand and then our external area lights would be matching our external sunlight now that we have these two little lovely down lights at the foot of the bed basically providing a glow to the walking area we could then go back into our library go to SketchUp and type in pendant light to see what kind of pendant lights are available to us now honestly sketchfab does not have the best pendant lights it has a decent selection of relatively basic stuff but if you wanted something a little bit more fancy you'd be going onto 3d sky or any of the rendering softwares previously mentioned maybe we want something like this wicker basket only that i've just noticed that it's 90 megabytes so we're not going to wait for that to download let's get a relatively basic glass pendant light click on that one to download select it once click and drag and connect it to our ceiling once we drag it in of course we need to scale it properly rotate it to the correct position and align it to our ceiling now the texture of this light could be anything i'm not really working on interior design at this point in time it's more so just teaching you the basics of twin motion so what we do is we copy that light across allow it to sit as an instance approximately on the other bed head go back to our materials drag and drop maybe a brass finish on them reduce the luminance go back to our materials grab the glass add a reflective glass around so we can see what's going on and then what we need to do is fly into our little globe go to lights go an omnidirectional light make sure we're dropping that omnidirectional light directly into the globe itself so let's fly back out select our omnidirectional light adjust it ever so slightly make sure our shadows are turned on reduce our lighting settings and then adjust it to the other side as well as you'll notice the omnidirectional light is going to cast shadows in every direction based on where you place it however it is immediately going to light up the scene create the shadows in the background and make this scene come to life at night time now obviously during the day none of these lights should be enabled you shouldn't really see them the sunlight would be more than powerful to actually illuminate this entire space so if we went into ambience for instance and simply turned off auto exposure for the purposes of this you'd see those lights starting to come into play as a nighttime rendering scene now those two tiny tiny little down lights basically play no effect from the externals but when you go inside your scene you'll see they cast a nice warm glow directly in front as does our area light so that area light we created before if we were to turn that off you'd see quite a lot of our illumination is gone and most of the illumination is coming from the sun out the front so as you can see these area lights provide quite a decent bit of additional illumination without having to force too many lights or make them overly bright or overly illuminated if we were now to select our base circles and our light fixtures we could go around add some more lights into this space copy them across rotate them as we see fit so now we have two little lights on that side of the window and we can drag two more lights over on this side of the actual room press ok fly back out you'll see we have six small lights around the perimeter of our master bedroom these two at the very end obviously being way way too close to that wall because they're casting too much of a light shadow onto the wall so if i was to move them away you'll see the light being cast less and less now don't get me wrong lights can cast shadows on walls and be wall washers i just haven't created that in this instance nor have we selected the right area light if we wanted a wall washer maybe we'd go something like this ie s09 so that we could push it further away and actually wash out that wall in a nice pattern or alternatively we might put them in the floor and rotate them 180 degrees the negative thing about this pendant light what i've just noticed is the fact that we don't have the ability to add a neon texture to the globe all of the glass is one element so if we wanted to add a neon texture we could go back to our library back to our objects back to our primitives create a small one meter sphere reduce the sphere significantly in size to 0.1 go to our library 
our materials and add neon two to the sphere. Now that we've got neon two to the sphere, we want to illuminate it at 350 and we simply want to drag and drop it inside the actual pendant itself. And when we have it inside the pendant, we can stretch and adjust it to slightly suit this shape that we've got inside. By doing so, we then get a more realistic example of that globe. It's still probably a little bit too dull, but we can work with that because it doesn't just look like a glass ball. We can obviously adjust as well by increasing our actual glow in the globes. And then that way it looks a lot more realistic. Now, if you've ever asked yourself, what is the difference between a high quality render and an average render you see all over Instagram? Well, the difference is the quality, the care and the assets. That's why I've teamed up with Globe Plants to be able to give you an incredible library of the world's best 3D photorealistic vegetation, trees, shrubs, and everything in between. I've used Globe Plants for a very long time now. You've seen them in my videos before. And finally, we've come together to be able to actually bring you a series worthwhile. So if you're looking for some incredible 3D plants, regardless of where you are situated around the world, it doesn't matter if you're in America, Australia, Africa, Europe, they've got all of the plants available for every single person around the globe. So make sure you check out Globe Plants in the description down below. The link is there for your convenience. If we wanted to create LED strip lighting as an instance, let's fly over into our kitchen and talk about LED strip lighting. Now, there isn't much light going on here because I haven't created any. So let's go back to ambience, turn out water exposure on so we can see what's going on. And let's say we want to create a little LED strip light underneath this bench top. First, we'd go back into our library, we'd go lights and we'd simply select our neon light. We can drag and drop that strip light down below, escape, select our neon light, adjust our intensity again to 450, reduce our length to approximately, I believe is three meters in this bar instance, and then carefully adjust our LED strip light until we are happy with the position. Once again, we wanna turn our shadows on because it is a real light. It is working for us. It is not working as an artificial filler. And then we can go back into ambience, turn off our auto exposure to see what that LED strip light would look like at nighttime. And as you can see, it's a perfect little space filler. It really illuminates that underbench glow. And at 450 lumens, it is quite strong. Potentially, you might want a very subtle glow, maybe 150 lumens, so we can reduce that as we see fit. Now, last but not least, what I haven't spoken about is inside all of these lighting examples in the, the actual library lights part, the last section is miscellaneous. If we select miscellaneous, and we're simply gonna get a few options available to us. None of these are really gonna make too much of a difference to your rendering quality, except dusk to dawn when you're creating and exporting some videos. If you select dusk to dawn, Go back to ambience and for this to work, you cannot have a HDRI sky on. So I'm going to disable my HDRI sky. I'm going to turn auto exposure on and I'm simply going to slide my time of day global lighting across. So as the sun beckons into this house in the afternoon, the shadows are beautiful. We get that golden hour and then we start to go into dusk and this LED strip light automatically turns on. So subtle, so beautiful. And as you continue to go into the night, that LED strip light becomes more and more prominent and more powerful. Anyway, team, that's all from me. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I'm gonna bring a playlist to the side of me. So if you're joining me a little bit later, you can find all of the content right here. Otherwise, smash that subscribe button, drop any comments in the description down below. But like always, I'll see you next Monday.